So I'm standing here in dry valleys overlooking my core. This is the Canadian glacier here. And, you know, mountain range in the middle of nowhere, far from the sea ice. And yet, this is what I find here, up here in this ridge. This is petrified seal. Um, I have no idea how old it is, you know, uh, but still very much intact. It's hard, like a piece of wood, uh, but you can see like the fins, the nails, the eyes just seem kind of haunted to me. Like, where on earth did you think you were going? How did you end up here on this ridge? Like, how did you get up here? There's literally this giant glacier cutting off this whole section, this giant mountain range. And to get here from the ocean, you'd have to cross over that mountain range, over this glacier, to end up here. It's amazing. Uh, how something like that happens. You know, a seal is not walking. It's moving along on its belly like you've seen seals do. And so for a seal to end up here is pretty astonishing. So, but that is uh, just the kind of thing you find all the time here in Antarctica. So I've been hiking up here for an hour or so, n n you know, not a living thing in sight. Uh, still not a living thing in sight, except this poor fella here. Antarctica, Earth's southernmost continent, is a land of extreme cold, unyielding winds and vast expanses of ice. Surrounded by the Southern Ocean which isolates it and contributes to its unyielding climate, Antarctica's weather is characterized by its extreme cold, with the interior's average winter temperature plummeting to a bone-chilling minus 70 degrees Celsius or minus 94 degrees Fahrenheit. Antarctica's most prominent feature is its ice, which covers about 98% of the continent. The Antarctic ice sheet is the largest single mass of ice on Earth, containing about 70% of the planet's freshwater. With the limited bacterial presence and the freezing temperatures that slow down the process of decomposition, Antarctica is a land of extremes, where the inhospitable climate and harsh conditions have forged a unique environment for preservation. The discovery of the mummified seals in Antarctica has puzzled scientists and sparked curiosity since their initial findings. The puzzling remains have been found in some of the most unexpected and remote locations across the continent. The mummified seals first came to light during the dawn of the 20th century, as intrepid explorers embarked on daring expeditions into the uncharted realms of Antarctica. Pioneering adventurers, including the likes of Robert Falcon Scott and Ernest Shackleton, unexpectedly encountered the preserved remains of seals in remote locations, far removed from the ocean's embrace. One of the most well-known locations where mummified seals have been found is the McMurdo Dry Valleys. Located in the Transantarctic Mountains, the Dry Valleys are a stark contrast to the rest of the continent, with virtually no ice or snow due to strong catabatic winds that evaporate moisture. This barren Mars-like environment is home to hundreds of mummified seals, some of which have been preserved for thousands of years, that lay some 40 or more miles inland and up to 6,000 feet above sea level. 
The discovery of these seals in such inaccessible and inhospitable locations is baffling. So what led these seals to journey across such treacherous landscapes? There are two competing mainstream theories as to the origins of the mummified seals. The disoriented seal theory suggests that seals, particularly young and inexperienced ones, may have become lost and disoriented in the vast, featureless Antarctic landscape. As they traveled inland in search of the sea, they found themselves trapped in a hostile environment far from their natural habitat. Without the ability to navigate back to the ocean, these seals eventually succumbed to the harsh conditions, leaving their mummified remains as silent witnesses to their tragic fate. The ancient coastline theory posits that the mummified seals died near the coast, possibly during a time when the coastline was closer to their current resting places or when sea levels were different. As glaciers and ice sheets shifted over time, the remains of the seals were gradually transported inland, where they became mummified in the cold, dry Antarctic environment. This theory suggests that the seals' final resting places are not indicative of their original location, but rather a result of the dynamic nature of Antarctica's landscape. While the disoriented seal and ancient coastline theories offer compelling explanations for the presence of these seals so far inland and in such pristine condition, is it possible that other explanations could explain this phenomenon? Could the same forces that caused the chevron deposits found along the world's coastlines have contributed to their demise? A particularly puzzling aspect of the mummified seals is the presence of gravel in their stomachs. This unusual finding has led researchers to speculate about the seals' behavior before their deaths. According to a study conducted in the journal Polar Biology, the researchers examined mummified seal remains and found that several of the specimens contained rocks in their stomachs, a phenomenon not commonly seen in living seals. One possibility is that the seals were consuming gravel to aid digestion or as a response to gastrointestinal distress. It has been observed in some bird species that they swallow rocks or stones to help grind up food in their gizzards. Although seals lack a gizzard, it is possible that they ingested gravel in a similar attempt to improve digestion when faced with scarcity or low-quality food sources. Another theory is that the seals were ingesting gravel as they tried to find food, mistaking it for prey in their disoriented state. Disoriented seals, far from their natural habitat, could have encountered difficulty in finding their typical food sources, such as fish and krill. In their desperation to find sustenance, they may have inadvertently swallowed gravel, believing it to be food. In addition to finding stones in the stomachs, some mummified seals show evidence of broken bones and other physical trauma. In the ice-free valleys lying between the Olympus and St. John's Ranges, mummified seals were discovered on glacial moraines with blood-soaked sand beneath them. The animals had bled profusely from the mouth and wounds, and dissection of the internal organs showed them to be suffused with blood where some bleeding had occurred into the abdominal cavity. In the summer, typical adult seals have around two and a half inches of blubber over the body. Some of the seals found that hinted at a violent death, showed signs of starvation as the skin beneath the abdomen was extremely thin, measuring to around 3 16 of an inch. Did these animals simply wander away from the shore to their deaths, or did something deposit them there, leaving the living to starve or die from wounds and depositing sand and rocks into their stomachs? What about the dating of the seals? The age of the mummies is done through carbon-14 dating, but as it turns out, this is not very reliable in the cold, inhospitable conditions of Antarctica. Radiocarbon dating is a method that measures the decay of the radioactive isotope, carbon-14, C14. 
to estimate the age of organic materials, such as wood, bone, or tissue. Carbon-14 is formed in the atmosphere when cosmic rays interact with nitrogen atoms. Living organisms absorb carbon-14 through the food chain, maintaining a constant level of the isotope in their bodies. When an organism dies, it stops absorbing carbon-14 and the isotope begins to decay at a known rate, called the half-life, approximately 5,730 years for carbon-14. By measuring the remaining carbon-14 in a sample and comparing it to the initial amount, scientists can estimate the time elapsed since the organism's death. C14 dating has placed the age of the remains in a wide arrow of historical points. Some date to almost 5,000 years, while others into the hundreds of years. Despite its usefulness, radiocarbon dating presents unique challenges in Antarctica. The Antarctic seawater has significantly lower carbon-14 activity than the global average, which can affect the accuracy of radiocarbon dating. This is due to the upwelling of old carbon-14 depleted deep water in the Southern Ocean, which dilutes the atmospheric carbon-14 signal in the local food web. As a result, organisms living in this region may have lower initial levels of carbon-14, leading to inaccurate age estimates when using standard radiocarbon dating methods. The perplexing mystery of Antarctica's mummified seals continues to captivate and baffle. Did these enigmatic creatures inadvertently wander into treacherous landscapes, only to face an untimely end in the unforgiving terrain? It baffles the mind to imagine seals crawling on their bellies for 40 miles over this difficult and unforgiving landscape. Or did they simply die near the coastline? where they normally habituate but were moved to their present location over time through the action of glaciers and ice sheets. Glaciers carve the landscapes leaving striation marks, drag boulders, and polished rock. Can we really see this as being the cause? Or was there a more cataclysmic explanation for their fateful demise?